Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Daily Devotions. My name is Vicar Brandon, and I'm in this week for Pastor Steve. And so I'm excited to walk with you through the book of Exodus, where we get to see God's hand of deliverance for his people out of slavery, bringing them up out of Egypt, and also reflecting on how that points forward to God's rescue of us from sin, death, and the power of the devil, all through his son Jesus, through his life, his death, and his resurrection. And so as we continue through the book of Exodus, we've just seen Moses receive the Ten Commandments from God. He's up on Mount Sinai speaking with the Lord. And as he's coming down, he sees that the people who have just been delivered from slavery are already slipping into sin, already disobeying God. And we get to see some of the consequences of that and how that plays out. So Exodus chapter 32, starting at verse 1. When the people saw that Moses was so long in coming down from the mountain, they gathered around Aaron and said, Come, make us gods who will go before us. As for this fellow Moses, who brought us up out of Egypt, we don't know what has happened to him. And so they're growing impatient. Aaron answered them, Take off the gold earrings that your wives, your sons, and your daughters are wearing, and bring them to me. So all the people took off their earrings and brought them to Aaron. He took what they handed him and made it into an idol, cast in the shape of a calf, fashioning it with a tool. Then they said, These are your gods, O Israel, who brought you up out of Egypt. So assigning that deliverance that Yahweh, that God had done for his people, instead of proclaiming that towards the true God, they're thanking uh, these false idols for that deliverance. When Aaron saw this, he built an altar in front of the calf and announced, Tomorrow there will be a festival to the Lord. So the next day the people rose early and sacrificed burnt offerings and presented fellowship offerings. Afterward they sat down to eat and drink and got up to indulge in the revelry. Then the Lord said to Moses, Go down, because your people, whom you brought up out of Egypt, have become corrupt. Notice that God says, your people to Moses, not his people. They have been quick to turn away from what I commanded them and have made themselves an idol cast in the shape of a calf. They have bowed down to it and sacrificed to it and said, these are your gods O Israel who brought you up out of Egypt. I have seen these people, the Lord said to Moses, and they are a stiff necked people. Now leave me alone so that my anger may burn against them and then I may destroy them. Then I will make you into a great nation. So God's threatening to destroy the people and to restart with Moses as the head of this new nation. But look at what Moses says to him. But Moses sought the favor of the Lord his God. O Lord, he said, why should your anger burn against your people, whom you brought out of Egypt with great power and a mighty hand? Why should the Egyptians say, It was with evil intent that he brought them out, to kill them in the mountains and to wipe them off the face of the earth. Turn from your fierce anger, relent, and do not bring disaster on your people. Remember your servants Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, to whom you swore by yourself. I will make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky, and I will give your descendants all this land I promised them, and it will be their inheritance forever. Then the Lord relented, and did not bring on his people the disaster he had threatened. Moses is interceding for the people, calling on God to be faithful to the promises that he made to their ancestors, to Abraham, that God promised Abraham that out of his descendants would come one who would redeem all things. That's the promise that God has set in motion through Abraham, through his descendants. And Moses says, God be faithful to your promise. And we see that God is faithful to his promise with Moses interceding, foreshadowing how Christ goes before God and intercedes on our behalf. We have fallen short of God's glory. We have fallen into sin. And yet Jesus takes our place. He intercedes for us. And because of Jesus, we have a God that's gracious and loving towards us and will fulfill the promises that he made. Moses turned and went down the mountain with the two tablets of the testimony in his hands, the Ten Commandments. 
They were inscribed on both sides, front and back. The tablets were the work of God. The writing was the writing of God, engraved on the tablets. When Joshua heard the noise of the people shouting, he said to Moses, There is the sound of war in the camp. Moses replied, It is not the sound of victory. It is not the sound of defeat. It is the sound of singing that I hear. When Moses approached the camp and saw the calf and the dancing, his anger burned, and he threw the tablets out of his hands, breaking them to pieces at the foot of the mountain. And he took the calf they had made and burned it into the, in the fire. And then he ground it to powder, scattered it in the water, and made the Israelites drink it. He said to Aaron, What did these people do to you that you led them into such great sin? He's confronting his brother. You were supposed to look after these people. What have you let happen? Do not be angry, my lord, Aaron answered. You know how prone these people are to evil. Aaron's casting the blame. They said to me, Make us gods who will go before us. As for this fellow Moses who brought us up out of Egypt, we don't know what has happened to him. So I told them, Whoever has any gold jewelry, take it off. Then they gave me the gold, and I threw it into the fire, and out came this calf. So this calf seems to magically appear. That's the response that Moses or that Aaron is giving to Moses, trying to convince him that he had really no big part in this. Moses saw that the people were running wild and that Aaron had let them get out of control and so become a laughingstock to their enemies. So he stood at the entrance of the camp and said, Whoever is for the Lord, come to me. All the Levites rallied to him. Then he said to them, This is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. Each man strap a sword to his side. Go back and forth through the camp from one end to the other, killing his brother and friend and neighbor. The Levites did as Moses commanded, and that day about 3,000 of the people died. See this wrath and this punishment for this disobedience towards God. Then Moses said, You have been set apart to the Lord today, for you were against your own sons and brothers, and he has blessed you this day. This referring to the Levites. The next day Moses said to the people, You have committed a great sin, but now I will go up to the Lord. Perhaps I can make an atonement for your sin, a payment for sin. That word atonement seen throughout the scriptures, a sacrifice of atonement. Jesus is called a sacrifice of atonement. His work is described as atonement, that he is paying the price for our sins. We've sinned, we've deserved the wrath of God, and yet Jesus is the sacrifice for that on the cross. He makes the sacrifice of atonement. So Moses went back to the Lord and said, Oh, what a great sin these people have committed. They have made themselves gods of gold. But now please forgive their sin. But if not, then blot me out of the book you have written. So Moses is saying, Have mercy on these people, but if you're going to wipe them out, wipe me out too. Again, foreshadowing that sacrifice of Christ. The Lord replied to Moses, Whoever has sinned against me, I will blot out of my book. Now go lead the people to the place I spoke of, and my angel will go before you. However, when the time comes for me to punish, I will punish them for their sin. And the Lord struck the people with a plague because of what they did with the calf Aaron had made. And so in this chapter, we see lots of different themes. We see that the people fall into idolatry, reminding us of how often we put our fear, our love, and our trust in things other than the one true God, putting our trust in ourselves, politics, money, whatever we can put our trust in, we do outside of the true God. And we see that there is punishment, there is wrath, there is anger. And yet we see that promise that there is an intercessor, that Jesus is the go-between between between God and man, and that because of him, we have a God who is faithful to his promises to bless us and to keep us and ultimately to forgive us. This is all through what Jesus has done for us because he was that sacrifice of atonement who laid down his life for the sins of the world and who raised it up again so that we could have life eternal with him. Thank you for joining us today and may God bless you throughout the rest of your day and the rest of this week.